Good morning, good morning, good morning from sunny Florida. Uh, it's actually a little cooler this morning. Got a little hoodie. Hoodie on, got a little hoodie weather going on here. Uh, today is my last day in Florida, guys. I'm getting up at 3 in the morning and I'm going to get on the road by 4 a.m. And I'm going to head to Mississippi. I am going to 3 Mississippi and hanging out. And Tim Wood Ridge Life's going to come as well and hang out. We're going to do a little barbecuing and a little hanging out. I do believe that we're going to be going live on 3 Mississippi on Saturday night sometime. I don't really know. Maybe Tim's channel too. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. And I'm thinking about going live here at my brother's house tonight on my channel. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen with everything that I got to do today. But we will see. I did want to show you all this though. Check this out. Here we go. This right here is what we call a lull. And basically it's an extended boom forklift. And my brother built this little jig system right here to be able to hang steel build little steel buildings this right here gives me flashbacks guys of my iron working days when i owned a steel company i used to drive one of these just about every day of my life and they are so handy i would love to have this on the mountain that right there would make building a bridge so much easier but yeah all wheel drive four wheel drive uh i think this is about a 60 or an 80 foot boom i'm not quite sure but yeah this right here is a beast uh me and my brother owned a steel company for about 12 years together it was called warren steel and uh, it was a pretty good size uh business we had uh 80 employees uh we worked pretty much seven days a week all around the state and sometimes out of the uh, state across the country and I did really, really well until the recession happened in 08. And we had to shut down. And, uh, you know, just like everybody else, we lost our business. You know, I lost my house, all kinds of stuff. That was kind of the change that led me to go to IT um, right after I bought a restaurant. When I shut that down, uh, I owned a sports bar for a couple of years. Didn't really make no money. Worst business decision I've ever made in my life was opening a restaurant especially at the end of a recession um, when it, we were still coming out of it. But I had nothing else going on, so I decided to take a chance and keep myself busy, and that's what led me to go back to college and do IT. So that's kind of a little backstory of my journey. And, uh, yeah, but I started out as an iron worker, building skyscrapers and schools and Walmarts and Walgreens and all that kind of stuff, everything from... 60 80 floors in the air down to little you know cvs's and walgreens and stuff so i did that for a long time me and my brother started that company when i was 21 years old um i was doing uh iron work and stuff uh before that actually doing working for other people i've actually been welding since i was early early teenagers really first time i welded was like 10 years old um but I actually used to go in the summers and work with my dad. My dad was an iron working foreman. And uh, I used to go in the summers and actually uh, weld and uh, build buildings and stuff then. So I've done it for a whole, whole uh, long, 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 long time. Let me show you this. This right here is the first building that my brother ever built out of wood. My brother is phenomenal whenever it comes to steel. He's a master fabricator. But he was never much of a carpenter. And I was always the type that knew how to do a bunch of different trades and stuff like that. My brother was pretty much steel. And uh, ever since he bought his house here, he's expanded his portfolio a little bit. And he's built some buildings around here. And this was his first one, and I thought he did a really, really good job. It turned out well. And uh, it's not quite done yet. He just had to replace his pump for his well, so that's why that's missing right there. But look how thick this is, guys. This right here is what we use on the roofs of the big steel buildings. And they put uh, rubber roofs and stuff like that over it. And then they got some other stuff that's actually bigger called mezzanine that uh, you pour concrete on and stuff. And that's the same stuff that I built my uh, little outdoor uh, 
kitchen and uh, laundry room and stuff on my homestead in Florida. That junk right there is hurricane proof, fire proof, zombie proof, apocalypse proof. That is some thick, thick, thick uh, sheet metal. And we got the doggos out here in the kennel. Uh, they stay in the house at night and they run when everybody gets, but my brother built this kennel for them right here. Same thing with some of that real thick decking and stuff up top. And real nice concrete and slab. And they hang out here during the day while everybody's at work. Yeah, and this right here is Tiger. And this one right here is named Hazel. Hazel is a, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, a Labradoodle. Yeah, Hazel's a Labradoodle. She, she reminds me of uh, that old 1970s shag carpet. Uh, that's what she looks like. But my brother home, background, got a nice screened in room with a swimming pool, gorgeous house. He's worked his butt off um, to be able to get this. He's actually got five acres here. And all of this used to be real, real thick woods. And he had somebody come in with a bobcat and kind of park it out is what we call, get rid of all the undergrowth and stuff and just leave the nice big trees and stuff. And it's absolutely gorgeous. And then right there, there's a hill that goes up that kind of creates a privacy fence around that whole back. The old Labradoodle over there, she's vocal. She is vocal. All right, then we're going to walk over here and check out some of the animals, guys. Some of the animals. Uh, there's actually some stories that go along with these animals over here. This right here is the first strike on my brother's property when he bought the house and he named it chick in <laughs> it's pretty clever i actually helped him build this uh when he first moved here uh to keep his chickens in he don't have many chickens right now he's actually got some on order there's a rooster and two hens what's going on guys cock a doo to do yeah this is the favorite part for me of the property. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning, girls and boys. So, the story behind this one is, I don't know if y'all remember my homestead in Florida, but this is Thelma. She came off my homestead in Florida. And she is just the sweetest thing ever. I love her so much. She was one of my favorite goats. When I left Florida, I left in three weeks and I had to bring all of my animals somewhere. Um, so I, I didn't just lose them all. So I had my brother take all of my goats and all of my chickens. And so they came down here. Thelma here had Louise. Like Thelma and Louise, you know how I like to name things. I like to name things in like character, like Knight Rider and all that. But uh, this right here is Louise, and she was the first baby. I need to get that collar off her horn. The first baby born on my homestead in Florida. Um, first ever. She was the first little baby on the homestead. So she's very, very, very special to me. Uh, let me come in here. So. I can show you the babies. Well, Louise just had babies for the first time. And this one right here, and I believe that one is her babies. So, I am a grandpa. <laughs> so, it is so cute to see my firstborn on my homestead in Florida have babies here on my brother's homestead. And also, I don't know if y'all remember the big female that I had named Georgia. Um, she passed away, but she was a big boar dapple goat. Well, this right here is her son. And he was also born on my homestead in Florida. And now all the babies that you see, he's the daddy. So all of the new life here on the homestead actually came from the babies that were born on my homestead up there, up north in North Florida. 
and he turned out to be a gorgeous gorgeous man didn't you buddy you turned out to be a stunner huh <laughs> yep i absolutely love his coloring and he is an impressive impressive male for sure and then look at baby look at this little baby dapple so cute what are you doing what are you doing wild child look tell me thelma's not sweet thelma remembers me and she every time i come over to visit she always comes up here because she misses me what are you what are you doing hey you you want to let me pet you no not yet but thelma always stays right there with me huh you was one of the first ones on the homestead. I miss you so much. Yeah. This is this is honestly the sweetest goat I've ever had. Right there, Thelma. I love her to death. And look at these two little cuties. Look at them. They are absolutely gorgeous. It looks like my brother left the water on. I'm going to need to shut that off. But check out the playground that my brother built him. He's got a little balance beam for him right here. He put a slide in with a little platform. They like to play King of the Mountain up here. They always have a fun time. And he's got some little stalls and stuff here that he built for them where he feeds them. Are y'all curious? Are y'all guys curious? Yeah. Yeah. You missed me, huh? You missed me, huh? I know, I missed you. I could hang out with you all day, Thelma. I could hang out with you all day. Louise, what are you doing? You remember me? You used to be so sweet and friendly. Now you act scared, probably because you got your babies. I understand. Come here. Let me try to get this collar off of you. Come here. Come here. Whoa. Oh, oh, I got you. Oh, 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 I got you. I got you. I got your collar. I had to fix it. I had to fix it. But the cool thing is, is the white one there, the firstborn on the homestead. If you go back to my earlier videos, you will see these goats. And you will actually see Thelma or a Louise being born. And I used to make a whole lot of goat shorts little videos little cute videos with music with little goats and stuff playing and uh was the star of the show i have a bunch of shorts of her playing on logs and doing jumping around and bouncing when she was a baby and uh so yeah definitely go back and check out some of my older videos on my florida homestead and you would oh man after you notice she's a lot like Ryder. as i walk she stays right beside me nothing's changed huh nothing's changed yeah, you are such a sweetheart. Yeah, she was always my favorite. Yeah, but I think it's just cool, the circle of life. Um, you know, fortunately, my brother uh, just bought this place uh, whenever I moved. And I was able to relocate the animals here where I knew they'd be taken care of well. And uh, look, I didn't walk all the way. She's still right there. She's still right there. Hey, cutie. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing? You grilling? You grilling me? <laughs> Look at that smile. Are you smiling? Oh, you want attention, huh? You just gonna follow me the whole time. What are you doing, Louise? You turned out to be a pretty girl. You turned out to be a pretty young lady. And uh, this one right here was not one of mine. I don't know what type of goat this is um, if you know let me know she's definitely a lot smaller these right here are Kiko boar mix um, Thelma Louise and also uh, I don't know the name of the what he ended up naming the the male that uh, was born on my homestead but those are Kiko boars and uh, that particular one's a dapple a dapple just means that they're spotted and got colors and they tend to go for more money i've got a lot of money invested in these goats um a lot of them's not here no more um but some of the, my key ones are and uh 
you know he has sold some of them just because of space reasons and stuff like that and uh a couple of them's actually passed away which they was getting a little bit older but uh the reason why i like kikos and boars so much is because uh boars are a really good uh meat goat and kikos are a little bit smaller and a more universal goat they can be used for meat or milking and stuff like that but the Real advantage to Kiko goats are is they're very durable. Uh, they don't have as many diseases and hoof problems and stuff as a lot of goats. And uh, that's why people mix the Kiko boars. Uh, that way they can get the size and the durability and uh, out of your goats. So I really, really like that bloodline. It's just uh, everybody's kind of got their preferences and that those are my kind of preference. This one, she's the mama to, I think, that one right there the little dapple one and she's a little thing i think she's more for like milking and stuff like that i'm really curious to know what kind of breed she is my brother doesn't know but she seems like a sweetheart she'll talk to you for sure <laughs> um ex uh, excuse me uh you were up my butt you were up my butt you remember the camera huh you remember, you always liked being a star. You always liked being videoed. Old Thelma, boy, she's going to stay right there with me. Let me shut this water off over here. My brother had to leave out early, early this morning, and I think he just accidentally forgot to shut the water off. So I'm going to help him out of here. Let me get the gate open. What's your name, little buddy? You got your little winter coat on, don't you? Don't you? Uh, let me see where the water's at here. No, I don't think that was the water. I think that one goes to his self-waterer right there. Oh, no, that is. That is. I think it just feeds them both. Yeah, I think so. Trying to figure out his operation here. But, yeah, that hose goes to there, and it looks like he's got a self-water... I wasn't even showing you. Yeah, that hose goes to there, which is overfilling. And then it looks like it also is plumbed to a self-waterer right there. But I figured I would walk y'all guys around and show y'all my brother's little uh, homestead that he's building here. And uh, like I said, gorgeous home. Gorgeous property. It looks so much better now that he parked it out. Definitely proud of him. He's a hard worker. Uh, me and him spent our younger life together traveling the country, building buildings and stuff and working our butts off. And he is by far the hardest per working person that I know uh, besides myself. He's the only one that I've ever truly felt can kind of go toe to toe with me with working side by side because we did it for so many years together. And he's got a big heart as well, and he's always helping people just like I do. Um, we're kind of cut from the same cloth. And uh, if also, um, last night, before I get off here, I went live with my nieces last night here um, for their first live. Uh, the live was on Life with Mars. Um, I will put that right here. And uh, man, it was such a good live. We had such a good time. And uh, we laughed so much and stuff. And also, uh, my niece, uh, Corinne, with SKW Lifts, she spilled some tea about what I'm actually going to be loading up today to take back to the mountain. So if you ain't went and checked that live out, and you kind of want a uh, sneak peek of what's to come, um, because you're going to see a video tomorrow while I'm driving to Mississippi, of what I loaded up in Gainesville that I'm bringing back and then on Monday you will actually see the video of what all I'm bringing back here 
But one thing that I'm bringing back here, she actually spilt the tea on. So if y'all want to check that out, go over to Lifewood Mars. Tell her that her uncle come on center and sent, sent you and uh, let them know that you're that I'm proud of them. And uh, and you'll get a little sneak peek of what's actually to come. And it's big, guys. It's big. So definitely do that. But I'm going to get off here because I got to start start getting stuff loaded up because I got to pull out, like I said, at four in the morning. So I want everything done to where all I got to do is walk to the truck with my keys in the morning, get in it and go. So until we see each other again, guys, come on, keep it real.